Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Please call to order at uh, 5.30, 6.30, March 20th. Happy spring. It actually does feel like a spring day out there now. Not at 5.30 this morning when it was 24 degrees. Uh, it's Monday. <clears throat> we have... Uh, an abbreviated meeting tonight because we had a couple things on the budget um, on the uh, agenda but they were changed at the last minute right Jeff yes so we will uh, we do have an executive session this evening um, that being said let's get the show on the road okay all right so first order of business approve the minutes of March 7, March 14th I make a motion we approve the minutes of March 14th. Seconded. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to accept as presented the minutes that are submitted on March 13th. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we have a 3-0 vote on that. Next, under new business, we have the appointment of Bill Ehrman as a primary wire wiring inspector. Correct. Then. So, um, as, as you know, uh, a few weeks ago, our electrical inspector passed away. Um, Mr. Ehrman has been serving as the um, temporary wiring inspector uh, doing backup work uh, for Mr. Murphy um, for a while and uh, at this point I think appointing him to serve out at, at least the, the remainder of this year. Um, and I, by the way, I have no compulsion or objection to appointing him again next year, but at a minimum um, serving out this year, I think he's done a great job. He's um, worked really hard on the Sanderson Place 120 North Main, which we know had some electrical issues with the solar panels that he helped them work through. So um, I've been really satisfied and pleased with him and, and would fully support him as the primary wiring inspector. Okay. Um, motion. I make a motion that we appoint Bill Ehrman. It's Bill, correct? Yes. For the remainder of the, the term. As my inspector. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Bill Ehrman to serve as wiring inspector for the remainder of this appointment, which runs until June 30th, uh, 2023. Uh, Bill will be replacing Peter Murphy. Peter was our wiring inspector for many years, did a great job. Um, and his passing kind of took us all by surprise. So, um, saying that, all those in favor of the appointment of Bill Ehrman, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero two. <coughs> um, old business. Let's see, the oil tank study engineering. Uh, yeah, that uh, the school wanted to probably coming back next week with more information. I think they get a, a bid for twenty nine thousand eight hundred to do the engineering, um, and they're just making sure that that is a reasonable amount of money to plan for a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have anything else to say? Apparently, <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself there. Opened up the wrong file. Uh, no, we're just confirming um, that 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 uh, there that are. For you, huh? I get. I, you know, trying to understand what what a, a thirty thousand dollar engineering plan would entail. Um, understand that it's also construct. It's not just engineering. It's construction administration. It's 
helping with bid stuff too. So Darius uh, is going to. Darius, yeah, he, he said he wanted to just get a little bit more information um, and was waiting for a couple numbers to come back and hadn't got them yet. Okay, Peter, Greg, was, did you have anything else to add? I just sense I got from, from a note I got from Darius was that uh, they basically were trying to see if there were other prices out there that might provide the services, you know, as, as good services for less money. And want to make sure that they had run through possibilities there before asking you to support whatever seemed to be the best fit. Which I makes, appreciate which that. makes sense to me. So, yep. And the idea was hopefully to be back here next week with with a bunch more information. Greg, Greg? anything? That's okay. That's I, and, and again, I <clears throat> engineering. Architecture things are under a whole different bailiwack of procurement and stuff like that, and I don't have a problem looking at. I think it's due, it probably good due process to do that, you know, and just just determine if it's a chapter thirty or chapter one forty nine. That's that in itself sometimes can save a lot of money. So, I would say that would be appropriate, and I I would just like to add that even though there's we've appropriated almost two hundred thousand dollars to date um, for the tank for the tank yes and that's supposed to that that is included what it, you know what it would take to dig up the old tank and that some of the cost but repeat but it does not cover the potential cost if there's contaminated soils, which they won't know until they actually start that that work. So just so we're assuming right now that there's no leaks, we probably pressure tested it. They they've done different things. It, it seems to be okay, but we don't know until until we open it up. So I mean, there may be additional expenses, but you're bottom line going to pay sooner or later. So. I don't think anything is getting cheaper, is it? So we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good thing. Looking at it, and the new tank is not going to be ten thousand; it's going to be six thousand, right? Yeah. And everybody's okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to hold off on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Capital stabilization override discussion. Yeah. So last week, um, select board had requested a little bit, uh, a more specific recommendation from the capital planning committee um, about the size of the override. So last week, the capital planning committee unanimously voted to recommend an additional capital stabilization override of two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Um, so doing the math on that, um, that would increase the tax rate by about 53 cents per thousand. So bringing it from 1280 to 1333. Um, and for the average property in town, which the assessed value is about 334000 it would mean an increase in the average tax bill of about $175. Um, and for people who may be tuning into this meeting and not the, the previous few, um, the reason we're talking about this is because uh, looking at the next 10 years of capital expenses, um, we're seeing about an average of half a million dollars a year. and um, the capital stabilization override this year is about 125,000, um, and it currently increases uh, only two and a half percent a year. So we know we will not have enough money for all of our capital projects um, in the coming years. Nathaniel, anything? Um, I mean, we've discussed, discussed last couple times. We discussed it. Pretty much went over all the the, the big. Uh, items there. Um, it, it, it's your question of whether or not we want to either prepare for the next 10 years or every year having to be going to the town asking for more money 
for the, the, the products we need to, to, to complete. And um, even at the 275 plus the 124 and change, um, we're still looking at being under our capital requirements for the next 10 years, so. Crystal? So the 175, that's per year, right? Not per tax, you know, I get billed twice a year. It's that, per year. Per year, yes. Yeah, yes. So it would be annual tax bill. Yeah. Right, under $100 per dollar. Un yeah, spot, yeah. Yeah, it's like thirteen dollars a month or something like that. So very moderate increase. Okay, anybody else? Anything to add? And, and again, I, I just think that when when you look at it there hey, I'd like to thank the um Permanent Building Committee for laying out a 10-year plan, looking at expenses, what it's going to cost over the next 10 years. I mean, that's very important for us to have an understanding of what what we're doing and, and how how we how we want to get to that position. Um, I think as we look more at the budgets that we have, um, when you have when you have specific when you have a specific item that it's it that the money is designated to then it allows it allows and and a, not only the expense but the funding of an expense so, and that's that's as critical you know it's easy to say i need or i you know they, you need something but for a town to try to figure out how to pay for it's very and and there's getting to be less and less room for um, capital expenditures out of our ordinary budget so uh, it, it I think it's a good idea we some the town has never used its some towns use their chapter um, 90 monies to fund purchasing things for the highway department our town throughout its history has never gone that route we put rather put the 90 chapter 90 money more into maintaining the roads, having passable roads, um, and we've always funded the uh, equipment for the highway department from purchases such as through our normal budget. So, again, knowing that the money is going to be used for capital projects, and we will be able to provide a outlook as how's that money should be suspended on what and on what items I think it's a big a big step forward so any other comments not hearing any comments let's move on okay I just wanted to note that next week um, we're gonna have to vote on the language for the ballot question for the override Yep. Exactly. Yep. So and I'll prepare that. But or the town clerk will give us an, a, on what for and why not. So make sure it happens. Operating budget discussion? Yes. So um, thank you, Peter, for helping me find it. I, I thought there was something fishy about it. Um, so there was a, a miscommunication originally between me and the assessors regarding new growth. Um, and unfortunately, it, it was not in our favor. Um, I, I had thought we had significantly, he had said we had significantly more growth than we actually did. Um, anyway, so right now, our current um, budget, which we have the governor's budget, we don't have local receipts, and we don't know what our free cash looks like. Um, based, and we also have not put a fine enough point on our health insurance yet. Um, but where we sit today is about a $74,000 uh, gap that we have to close. Um, and last week that was about a three hundred thousand dollar surplus and it was because i thought um we had four hundred thousand dollars in in uh new growth and it was closer to fifty thousand this year so 
um, chances are that will shrink. The uh, deficit will shrink somewhat as we get our local receipts in. Um, if the House and Senate um, increase any of the local aid items, obviously that would help as well. Um, otherwise, we're probably going to need to... Uh, I guess the other thing I should say is that it also doesn't include any new positions in this budget currently. So... Uh, you said this does not include free cash? It does not currently use free cash, and we do not have free cash certified. Okay. So free cash will be... Okay. So there is a position in the elementary school. Correct. I'm sorry. Yes. So there is a position. Okay. None in the town. Correct. In, in this budget, yes. And is that including um, going up 2.5%? Or is this? Yes, this is wage adjustment two and a half percent. Our best guess on health insurance with the current membership. So we're gonna have to figure out what what the buffer is for new members. Um, I mean, in terms of prop two and a half, is this, this oh. included us raising taxes by the uh, oh, allowable yeah. amount? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just want to clarify that. And how much was the shortfall you said it was fifty thousand? Uh it's it's actually seventy three because I um there were a couple things that I updated after I sent you the updated one. Okay. Um and I'll send that around again tonight. Uh and it was mostly um anticipating that we're gonna have more uh expenses in the finance department. Okay. Comments? Words of wisdom? I mean, certainly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, part of why the school committee is here at this time of year, or at least represented by a, a number of uh, officially in session, uh, is to hear this kind of stuff so we can take it back and inform uh, our discussions. Uh, so it's, it's good to know uh, where you guys are at uh, with, a, with a fine point as we decide where to go with our final budget. And, uh, so... In response to that, um, Jeff and I met with our accounting services this afternoon for a while um, to express our concern. And we had started expressing our concern in October. Um, so, Greg, You've been here for a while, and you know the guys, the, the people that sit at this table always say, well, there's two parts of a budget. There's a revenue and there's an expense, and you're going to look at both because that's what a budget is. And to tell you that it's been pleasant the last seven or eight weeks without being able to have a discussion with a lot of our departments because we have not had the proper information would be an understatement. But it's what we're given to play with and we'll play by the rules. And I do know that our recap has been submitted and everything supposedly completed, that uh, we've been assured that they're in con that our accounting service provider is talking to uh, the uh, Department of Revenue, right? Mm -hmm. um, look, so we've been assured that it's that it's coming. There may be questions, but it should be coming. So it's been a very uncomfortable position, but it's not how we like to do business. But it is the way it is. So, so and and I know. When I talked to Jeff, I said, when we had, that's a problem sometimes, is when you put out numbers without verification, um, you don't know. And that, and when Jeff, when Keith was here last week, and, and that was the first time we had seen, that was the first time we had seen revenue numbers. 
And we were all, when we saw that 390, 400, whatever it was, it was like, ooh, where did that come from? So, he so said that would be first time in a long time that we had, Sundown, Town of Sundown had excess revenue capacity. When was the last time you heard those words, Peter? Excess wow. revenue, we had $60 one year, but. I would say it was before I moved to Sunderland. So. I know. We, I think we had, uh, there was one time we had like $600 excess levy capacity, but uh, you don't hear that word often. I know one of the towns across the street, across the river, had a million dollars at one time, and that got depleted like in two years. So, I don't know. So, we had a honest, open, and frank discussion. How was that for clarifying them so we did so we're, we're so right now we're about 70,000 in the hole yep okay what do you think I see we, worse Nathaniel that. we never had this problem before you got on the board I know <laughs> it's, it's entirely <laughs> so actually oh. sorry looking at it it's um there, there was I found a typo it's closer to 90,000, but 1,800 instead of 18,000. Um, 20 here, 20 there. But the, I mean, that's the other thing. We have to talk to Smith Boak and see how many students to prepare for, for not sending students. Well, they should already told us. They're not going to tell us until August. <laughs> but we will find out how many apply then. Okay, Peter? I think Darius just generally knows who is applied because they have to get okay with Frontier to apply. Who is applied, yes. Yeah. Okay. But whether or not they're going, right? Yes, sir. Um, I just you asked for suggestions, so I was just going to toss out that I think that your board at the beginning of this process put out the, the guidance it gave to departments on was level services, but also let us know if there's other stuff and additional levels of services. And my sense is that the budget spreadsheet as it is right now includes the various other things that were included in additional level services. And I don't know if your board has, you know, given the hard look to them or not. And you know, not yet, because that certainly be part of the process that needs to come. Yeah, cause we last week we had four hundred thousand extras, so we didn't have a problem. And and I'm not even saying what we see right now is a problem because that's not, not applying free cash. And 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 and, it, and one thing that we that we've done over the years is that we put together policy as to how we use free cash, and 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 we've been pretty successful by following that policies. Not not that it's. I mean, last year we had. We may have tweaked. We tweaked it because of some things that were happening, but we we tweaked it because we knew that there were some extraordinary things that occurred that you had to that you knew you were going to get right back. So, and that's that's just dealing and how the state deals with numbers. So, the way they do accounting. So we we knew that. So we felt it was going to we would be okay this year, and I think we're okay. It's just. But we haven't gone through and looked at everything, and and I know, you know the, I I've, I've heard from Scuttlebutt that, you know some people maybe look you know some towns may be looking at the South County budget really, more closely. Um, I know our Frontier budget has gone up significant this year, but it's basically it's based on you know it's an assessment based on a formula. And Conway got hit pretty hard, I think, last year, um, or dear, one of the town. And it seems that it, and don't ask me how it cycles through, but it seems like it's our year to be in the pickle barrel for, for the frontier budget. And we don't really see anything out of the ordinary in their budget. I mean, they're not whole, you know, wholesale hiring of people or anything. I mean, it's just, but when your budget's 70% labor, which most of the schools are, or more, 
you know, when you look at two and a half percent increase as a COLA, and then you have steps for your budget's going to, you, you have to look at how to cover those expenses. So, and that that's why I think that the 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 stabilization, the 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 capital stabilization is a good idea because we're we're recognizing those other things and and we're saying, okay, that but we still have needs in our community, you know, we have to have. You know, we had a surrounding community maybe 10, 15 years ago that they we ended up lo loaning trucks to to help plow snow because their their equipment broke down. They couldn't plow snow. That's a fact, you know. So that happened. We, we just were, we, we had the opportunity. We've been very fortunate that we have two construction companies that have been very generous to the town that that have helped us when we needed help before also so what we do okay so i think we can start having when jeff firms up the numbers we can we can actually look start having that conversation next week yep. good so next week and now now we get down to the brack brass tax we could, we're able to ho hopefully we're going to hear more from DOR in the next week or so, maybe. Hopefully. So. Okay, anything? Guys, thank you for coming. Anything else? Thank you. Jeffrey, next. Um, I think we're ready to go. Select under. board updates? Yep. Any select board updates? Daniel? Uh, nope, just had the capital planning committee meeting last week where we solidified a couple things, um, but nothing to report that we haven't already discussed. Crystal? Village center committee meeting. Um, yeah, they're working on the, the document for getting some people to, you know, bid on the... Mm -hmm. Actually, I do have one other thing I wanted to mention. I um, just wanted to congratulate the Frontier Theater Department for an absolutely amazing rendition of Chicago. Um, it was impressive. It was, it was a, a lot of fun. There was humor, dancing, amazing singing all around. It was just wonderful. So thank you to the Theater Department um, and to the cast and the crew. Thank you, Nathaniel. Um, we, Jeff and I, went to a... Uh, tour of the former congregational church in Deerfield last week um, as a so we had it was a it was a walk through of the facility with the town of Deerfield and in the uh, Whiteley and a couple basically look at it as a Deerfield has a couple grants that they'd like to um, utilize to um, bring some money in there to maybe you utilize portion of it right now as a uh, um, senior center as a temporary home for the senior center for the next three or four years potentially five years um, and one of the things there was a an assessment study that needs to be done and I think uh, when we were over there, it, it appears that to me, at least, that there's enough room um, to do what we need to do temporarily. Um, so I believe the De town of Deerfield is going through with the assessment. Uh, seeing that Whiteley was on board with the stipulation that um, it's just an assessment and doesn't say yay or nay to moving there. And they 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 want to continue to and I think we all agreed that that was that was good. So I I believe they're pursuing with the assessment now, right? So they're they're pursuing with that. They have monies allowed um, lined up, and I I think you know it'd be nice. It it would in my opinion it'd be nice if we could have someone. Um, when you look at an older building, there's. There's expenses related with an older building when you go to renovate. I would I and and I think sometimes people 
may not see the potential of the end result of renovation either. So it'd be nice to look at certain things so so we could people could see what what's envisioned for there. That's a hard thing to, to have that site. There's some people that have, and that's why some architects, are, especially if you choose an architectural group that that's into renovation, they can do amazing things. That being said, there's also expense to renovate. And sometimes that expense is pretty high, but sometimes historical preservation has a, a place also. So we're going to see what they say. And, we'll, and hopefully it will be done shortly. And the work I think they're talking about the fall time starting, if so. it goes through. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we did the other day. So that's up on tap. Anything else? Jeffrey, town administrator. Yep, just a couple of quick things. Um, last week we had talked about uh, the tag sale for the women's club, and um, I forgot to ask. They're a nonprofit organization, and typically the select board waives the fee for any town fees for, for nonprofits. Is that something the select board would consider for motion this sale? I motion we waive the fee for the women's club to have a tag sale. Yeah, seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, uh, waive fee for the Sunland Women's Club tag sale that's going to be held same time the book sale. Book sale, the library. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Two things. One is um, I talked to Mr. Laurinaitis uh, from the water department and... He doesn't like his fire hydrant knocked over, does he? Oh, we didn't talk about that. That's pretty amazing. Do you see that guy went right... How did that happen? Th did you see that? No, where? On the corner of North Main Street and North Plain Road, that fire hydrant, they put up, they, they moved it for the, the, the changing when the, they did the work on North, so they moved it a little bit. They put up two bollards in the car. I don't know how it happened, but he went right through the bollard, didn't touch either one of the bollards, and went right over the fire hydrant. It was a perfect shot. That's I know. It was perfect. Um, well, no, we were talking about the furnace in the old fire station and how it is going, and um, they are looking at replacing it uh, and possibly putting a mini split in the office and just wanted to let us know in case we had any um, ideas or suggestions for for that building, but they understood that it was um, their responsibility as tenants to replace it, so. It is, yeah. that's our agreement. So. Yep, but they just they just wanted to make sure that, that you were aware. Um, um, I, I would just try to make sure it's done in the character of the building, yep. you know. And then the last thing is just a reminder, um, since we have uh, the annual report is going to be due soon. So if there are any committee chairs out there watching um, that haven't sent their reports in, please do so as soon as you can. Thank you. Greg, thank I saw you weren't running again. That's true. Correct. Thank you for your service. You didn't. I remember the first day. Where they grabbed you kicking and screaming into this room and nominated you. So, uh, thank you. It's when I heard the term three years. Yeah, <laughs> three years. Yeah, you heard that for yeah the three years. It's kind of extended a few, but thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Okay, at this time, I think that concludes our our uh, open session. We so we have we're going to go into executive session to. The town is the town had a um, had a dog hearing not, not too long ago in the past. Um, that decision was challenged in the courts, so we're working on towards a settlement, and that's what we will be talking about this evening. We will. Um, come back to open session only to adjourn. We won't be taking, or are you going to require us to take a vote? Is, uh, there, no. is there a need to take a vote in um, open session? 
There may be if you um, agree to the settlement terms. Okay, so we may, we will come back to open session so that we can vote on this um, if we have to. How's that? Good. That being said, pursuant to Master in the Law, Chapter 38, Section 21, Paragraph 3, to discuss litigation strategy case of Shin Fen Lu versus Town, Greenfield District Court, case number 2241CV000133. If discussing the matter in open session will have a detrimental effect on the town's litigating position, and the chair so declares. So declares. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I motion we enter executive session. Seconded. Okay, motion made and second enter into the executive session. At this time, I'll ask Jeff to do a roll call vote. Mr. Waring? Aye. Mr. Tremblay? Aye. Mr. Feigenkevitz? Aye. So we will be adjourning to having this discussion. <laughs>